Hey, I'm Hannah. I'm a writer. I'm a teacher. I'm a bitch. I'm a lover. I'm a child. No. So today we're talking about how to write the opening scene of a novel. These tips could also apply to short stories and other things, but I've got novels and long form stories in mind. So I have six tips for you and then we're gonna look at some examples. First off, you've probably heard the phrase start late and end early in terms of when to begin and finish your story. And I totally agree with that. It's so much better to leave your readers wanting more rather than like bog them down with a ton of information that they'll either skim or like even find boring enough not to finish reading the story at all. So you wanna drop your reader into the middle of the action. You can give background information later and if you can skip writing a prologue, I beg you to do it. Especially for emerging writers who are just submitting their manuscripts to agents. Prologues look weak, they're less interesting, they're often completely unnecessary. Most readers will skim or skip them. So start with your story if you can and start in the middle of something. We don't need to know everything about your character or your world immediately. I haven't read the Witcher books um, yet, they're on my list, but I've been watching the TV series and there's a great lesson in in that show about how to start a story. Like they don't give you a bunch of background information. They really don't explain anything at any point. They just snatch the viewer in immediately with Geralt fighting that monster. Then you're just dragged through this fantasy universe and you learn like the rules and the magic system and the characters as you go along. I love this series. I've seen it multiple times. I don't think there's a boring moment in it because they're not spoon feeding the audience anything. You have to be actively consuming the story and that makes it so much more interesting and it leaves the room for layers of subtext. So start your story with your story and leave the exposition for later. The second thing you want to make sure you emphasize in your opening scene is the setting. The reader should know what world and era your story is set in really quickly. This doesn't mean dropping a ton of exposition. It means choosing a scene in your story that is both interesting and grounding in the world that the story takes place in. Like I've read manuscripts that were deep fan fantasy or sci-fi or contemporary fantasy and I didn't realize until like the third or fourth chapter. You need to ground the reader way sooner than that. What's up? Even if it's not all super duper clear in the first scene, in the first or second chapters, you should have already set up the rules that your universe is going to follow. And by rules, I mean that we know what's going on with your magical elements. So say you have a contemporary fantasy, and everything is exactly as it is in reality except animals can talk. We need to know immediately that animals can talk, and you can't throw in like two thirds of the way through the book that people can also fly. Like if you have a character in a situation, and you get them out of it by them flying away, like where'd that come from? It ruins the suspension of disbelief and it also just makes your story harder to connect with because your audience doesn't feel like you're being honest to them like because now anything can happen so you kind of lose your readers trust in a way the rules of your universe are basically what level of unrealistic is it and then what are the circumstances and limitation of your magic system if you have one so we should know when and where and the rules of your universe like as soon as possible the third thing is your character who's your character we should kind of see what they're up to and know who they are at the beginning of the story you want your reader to have something to connect with as soon as possible so your opening scene should be something that's characterizing we should learn the basics of your character like the important aspects of their personality and maybe like what their driving force is and what they want really early in the story. And yes, you have your full story to develop your character and get your reader to understand them better. But the earlier on you can make that empathetic connection between your reader and the character, the more compelled your reader will be to finish the story because they care about that character and they want to see how it turns out. The fourth thing is conflict. We need some kind of tension. We need unanswered questions. You need to hook your reader, especially as an emerging writer, because you don't have that established trust with your audience yet. So you have to pull them in quickly. So make sure that whatever is happening in your opening scene is intriguing in some kind of way. This is how I've seen a lot of new writers try to utilize a prologue. They'll take like the most interesting scene from somewhere in their manuscript and just put it as like a flash forward for a prologue. When it doesn't actually serve any purpose, it's kind of just the easy way out of writing an interesting opening scene. That's not the solution because again, most readers will skim or skip your prologue. So that's just kind of the lazy way out and we don't wanna do that. Your opening scene should have enough tension that it's interesting on its own. The fifth thing is avoiding too much exposition. The reader just does not care yet. If it isn't interesting, just save it and like push it back until it's crucial to reveal. I have a video all about how to like naturally include exposition in your writing if you wanna check that out. My sixth tip is to avoid having too much happening at once. I read some advice, I can never remember by whom or where, but they said something to the effect of picking a sustainable moment. So what's a scene that can go on for several pages without needing a lot of exposition and without having to like hop to a different scene? So your first scene should be chunky with interesting things about your character. It should ground us in the setting really quickly. It should establish the rules of the universe and it should pull your reader in 
with some kind of intrigue. So for these videos, I like to have my patrons send me excerpts from their own writing so that I can edit it in a video for you guys. Thank you patrons that sent me excerpts. These aren't full scenes because I didn't want the video to be a thousand years long. So we'll just demonstrate what we can do with the first page and hopefully see how some of these tips apply to real stories. The first one is from my patron Maya. Thank you for letting me use your scene, Maya. Oh boy, get ready for me not to be able to pronounce any of this. Part one, Parvena. Why do we have a semicolon? Where are you? When are you? Who are you? Answer these to answer your destiny. You must ground yourself to retain yourself. An ever-expanding universe teeming with life, a cluster of a thousand galaxies, one with spiraling tentacles of a million stars, a tiny system fed by a golden orb, a planet of mostly water mods. <laughs> Sounds like Earth. I am Parvana Najmi. Daughter of Rostam and Hadiva, <laughs> descendant of fairs, a human, a warrior, a dragon. The golden orb beams through the blue sky. That's the sun. Rippling the air in its heat, sense of a dozen species of flower and a few species of tree bob along in the air, while robins tweet in warning amidst the predatory screech of a kestrel. Green grass gleams and shimmers, wafting in a breeze, a breeze emanating from a large figure, an 18-year-old girl. Her chest rises and falls, lifting her lavender robes, her eyes tight shut. They're arriving tonight, I wouldn't worry. Her nostrils flares, her father's voice resonates in her memory, and she resumes her stance. Her thick legs spread apart and bent, her bare sepia feet clutching the soil, and her bulging arms held close to her belly rolls. Y'all, she's thick. Either way, I know you'll make me proud. I already have your pride. It's you I want. Her glistening brow frowns. Her jade eyes snap open, wide and piercing. My duty is to protect the city, then so is mine. She focuses on five straw dummies in the distance, set a few meters apart. Calculations rush to her mind, angle, speed, power. Her fingers flex in anticipation, her muscles and neurons energized, but her mind empty. She makes her heart beat faster and faster, pushing her chest wider against her robes, pushing off the ground. She twirls forward as crackly lightning surrounds her massive body. She channels it all through her arms, steadies it with the other as she lands and blasts five bolts from each finger with a crack of thunder. The bolts pierce their target and ignite them. Parvana Nami, I don't, I don't know, exhales, her body glowing and her heart racing. She stands fully and catches her breath. Sweat glistens on the blonde stubble of her undercut. She thick and she gay, reflecting the light beneath her crimson hair. I pray Roshana understands this. She turns her back to the dummies and strides away, her mind still calm. Okay, so we got a human warrior dragon princess and she's demonstrating her lightning skills. So this is her father speaking or her father's voice resonates in her memory. So she's remembering things that her dad said. Pardon me, but I'm gonna, yeah. I like that we've got a lot of description here, but something about the way it's written just makes it kind of distracting. And we got a lot of semicolon. This phrasing makes me feel like she's like hiding her eyes, like she doesn't want to see something, but that's not what the rest of it tells us. Like she's relaxed. Using bold and prose, super distracting. I'm gonna have her dialogue or whatever you want to call it. I'll just have her actually saying it out loud. Blair. Something about belly rolls just really makes her seem like a child or Pillsbury Doughboy. I think I'll just put belly, eh. I'm just gonna put sides. I think we get that she's thick. I already have your pride, it's you I want. I can't tell if this is supposed to be aggressive or like she misses her dad. Makes her heart beat faster, pushing her chest wide against her robes. They have the repetition of pushing there. I can't tell if she's in the air or, stu wait, studies it with the other as she lands. So, what if we just leap off the ground? The straw dummy ignite. Parvana nom <laughs> exhales, her body glowing and her heart racing. She stands fully. I'm gonna take out reflecting the sunlight just cause that's not what hair does. <laughs> I pray Roshana understands this. She turns her back to the dummies and strides away, her mind still calm. This is still a sentence fragment. So in that one, I would love to see more of the character and more of the world that we're set in, but I think that this is an interesting opener. I have questions about who this character is and what are their goals and why do they have powers, so this scene has potential. The next one is from Riley, who is so wholesome and one of only two gold star patrons in my discord group chat which just means that their vibes are flawless all of the time you can find riley's youtube channel linked in the description oh already a name i will be able to pronounce we'll go with elena elena isabel i'm coming home the mountains are snow topped and gray now a stark contrast to the lush green i left six months ago i turned down off the cobblestone street onto the dirt path of basin provincial faces i know pass by but they seem older now they are i suppose returning from deployment often feels like time travel your home stays the same and so do all the buildings around town but those who inhabit it change new hobbies and inside jokes arise 
wise, while you rot in the desert none the wiser that you were in fact invited to the party. Town square booms with traders and booths, no doubt stocking for the harsh months. I look to see if Olena is there. Olena? Huh. I look to see if Olena is there, selling her jellies and jams, but I doubt it. School go out not but an hour ago, and she's still probably stuck at our dining table grading papers. I count off all the houses until I find my own. One, two, three, four, fifth from the light and second from the right, I think. The way I did to little Isabel when she was trying to learn home from school before my first deployment. I shut off the motor of my town runner and take in the sight. Despite the frigid temperatures, all in his bedroom window sits wide open and the kitchen light is on. It's a small house with a small garden in the front yard and a chipped white paint. The fence is worn and we have sheets for curtains, but it's ours. I jiggle my keys free from the lock on the front door. I'm home. I'm going to cut the first line. I think I'm going to put some movement in the first sentence since they're driving. Or gray. <laughs> they were green when I left. I think I'm going to make this the second paragraph. Returning from deployment often feels like time travel. I think I'm going to put this up here. About the building stay the same. But the inhabitants change. Or just but the people inside them change. Faces I recognize pass by, but they seem older now. I suppose they are. I'm gonna put this up here too. I feel like we need something else here, like new hobbies and babies and inside jokes, something like that. While you rot in the desert, none the wiser that you are in fact invited to the party. And then I think the is missing. The town square booms with traders and booths, no doubt stocking for the harsh months. It's already winter, isn't it? I look for... I'm going to make this one paragraph. School. Barely let out an hour ago. She's probably still grading papers at our dining table. I count off. I count off houses. One, two, three, four, fifth, fifth from the light and second from the right. To myself, the way I did to little Isabel when she was learning the way home from school before Kana. I pull into the driveway and shut off the motor. I'm going to move this paragraph up here. It's a small house with a small garden. I don't like the repetition of small. And the front yard is implied because they're looking at the front yard. It's a small house with a tidy garden and a chipped white paint. The fence is worn and we have sheets for curtains. Sags and we have sheets for curtain, but it's ours. Despite the frigid temperatures, all in his bedroom window sits wide open. I jiggle my keys free from the lock on the front door. I'm home. I watched the gray snowtop mountains roll by. They were green when I left. I would expand the beginning. This is really quick. So put that up there. I don't want to write a new sentence, but I still feel like we're missing something here. I think we could beef this up with some more characterizing details, but it's also an interesting scene to open up on because it's a character returning from duty. So we have questions like, how have they changed while they were gone? How have things back home changed in significant ways? And how are they gonna acclimate to whatever those inevitable changes are? After this page, I expect them to like walk in their house and something absolutely dramatic has changed and that'll be the inciting incident. I haven't read anything else from this book, but I feel like that's what it's leading up to and that would be an effective opening scene, I think. That's all I got for you today. I hope you learned something or at least had a good time. Subscribe and hit the notification bell because I upload every Thursday or I try and it's the thought that counts. My short story collection, Little Birds, is available on Amazon in ebook and paperback. It's available on my website in signed paperback and soon to be audiobook. I'm very excited. Making an audiobook is fun. I'm not reading it. I hired a narrator. Her name's Gretchen. She's pretty cool. Thank you for watching and thank you to my patrons for sponsoring this video, especially Maya and Riley and everyone else who send in scenes for me to edit for this. If you want me to edit your writing in a future video, go to patreon.com slash Kidder. Can you hear Saya snoring? She's the best. Follow me on Instagram to see pictures of Saya. That's all I post. Uh, yeah, see you next week. Bye.